And we're going to go ahead and get started. So good afternoon and welcome to the final workshop in our marketing tools for small business series hosted by Inca Center for Pandemic Response in collaboration with SciTech Business Solutions and the SUNY Canton SBDC. My name is Mihaela and I'm a program navigator with Inca CPR. Uh, quick agenda for today, I'll go over some housekeeping notes as always and provide a brief introduction to ANCA and the Center for Pandemic Response for anyone joining us for the first time, and then we'll move on to the main presentation. So a few notes before we get started, this event is being recorded and will be available on ANCA's YouTube channel following the session. We will also share the recording and slides with all registered participants. If you'd like to update your name as it appears on Zoom or add your pronouns, you can click the participant button at the bottom of your screen and select rename from the drop down options next to your name. If you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat, please feel free to do so. Uh, we ask that all participants remain muted during the presentation, but you can type questions into the chat if you have them and I will read them aloud. We will also have time at the end for Q&A and discussion and I'll read any questions from the chat at that time as well, but you'll also be able to unmute to ask questions. So a quick introduction to ANCA and the Center for Pandemic Response is a nonprofit, uh, non-governmental organization with 23 staff based in Saranac Lake. We serve the 14 northernmost counties of New York State. Our vision is a new economy that works for all, uh, focusing on building prosperity across northern New York with the goal of creating and sustaining wealth and value in local communities. We work across these four main service areas, small businesses, food systems, clean energy, and diversity and inclusion. Within those four service areas, ANCA CPR is a single point of contact for businesses, nonprofits, and entrepreneurs to ask, access programs and services uh, provided by each of these programming areas and connect you to expert partners across the region. We work with a number of great partners throughout the region, including SciTech Business Solutions and the SUNY Canton Small Business Development Center, who you have met throughout this program series. And this is a little more detailed perspective on some of the resources and services that we can provide you as a small business. So feel free to reach out to us for uh, any of those services or resource needs. Okay, joining us today for Digital Marketing Basics is Michelle Collins from the SUNY Canton Small Business Development Center. Shell is a business advisor with advanced certification at the SUNY Canton SBDC, having joined the center 23 years ago as one of its first business advisors. In this role, Michelle assists ex aspiring and existing entrepreneurs through many of the challenges of entrepreneurship with one-on-one -on -one advisement services. She also conducts training and seminars on a variety of small business topics and previously taught small business management as an adjunct instructor at SUNY Canton. So thank you and welcome, Michelle, and I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you. So today we're going to talk about digital marketing basics. Um, you know, as part of this series, it's kind of tying into the other topics that you've talked about. Um, and so, you know, I can tell you ahead of time, this is going to be a very generalized overview. Um, just so that you know that um, I probably won't be getting into a lot of specifics about exactly how to do some of the things I'm talking about, um, but letting you know about some of the tools that are available. Um, you know about me already, thanks to Mahala, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, I do want to talk to you a little bit about the SBDC, though, for those of you who aren't familiar. Um, so the Small Business Development Center is actually a network of 22 centers located across New York State. Um, and then in addition to those 22 main centers, we also have a number of outreach offices. And so, you know, if you look at this map with all of our locations, um, you know, depending on where you are in the state, um, you know, it may not look like there's anybody right close to you, but we do have outreach offices and, and we do, you know, make a pretty concerted effort to, to be conveniently located for, um, you know, most people in our region. Um, our services include, you know, one-on-one -on -one advisement for small businesses. And so, you know, that's from the startup phase. We work with people who, you know, come in to see us who just have an idea that they're, they're trying to work through and aren't sure if they're going to pursue it yet, all the way up to businesses that are in operation, um, maybe getting ready to hire their first employees or getting ready to expand. Um, 
And then also, you know, um, helping along with ANCA and the Center for Business and Transition in succession planning when it's time to, you know, move out of that business and into something new or into retirement. And so our services are really tailored directly to whatever the client needs from us. Um, so for one person, it might be business plan development. For another person, we may be talking about marketing and somebody somebody else may be talking with us about government procurement. So there's a lot of different things that we can do. The things that we can't do would include giving accounting advice or legal advice. But other than that, we, we should have the resources to help out with pretty much all aspects of, of business development. And I should mention also that all our services are free. There's no charge um, to meet with a business advisor. Uh, everything that we do is, is free and confidential. So this is what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to talk a little bit, um, you know, briefly about digital marketing and you know what it is and, and why it's important. Um, we'll talk about some ways you can be prepared to start going down the road toward um, digital marketing because there are some things that will make that um, a little easier for you in the long run. Then we're going to get into some of the more specifics in terms of what are the tools that are out there that can help you uh, with digital marketing in general. And, and you'll find that there's a very broad spectrum of things. Um, and we won't necessarily cover everything, but I think we're, we're covering the things that are probably the most prevalent and, and the most important for, for the majority of businesses. Um, and then we're going to talk about, you know, how you go about deciding which of those tools are the most beneficial for you. Um, you know, how do you develop a plan and, and how do you um, you know, get that plan in place. And so we'll talk a little bit about that, um, you know, with the, with the caveat that, you know, probably the best course of action is some follow-up assistance from someone at ANCA and or the SBDC to kind of help walk through this planning process and finding the resources to help you out with all of these different things. So, you know, thinking about what digital marketing is and why it's important, and I think that that might seem like a no-brainer and a simple question to answer, um, but I like to cover it anyway because it does cover so many things. Um, but basically, digital marketing is, you know, any of the channels that you use online um, to promote your product or your service or your company. Um, and so that includes everything, everything you would do online, it includes your website, uh, you know, mobile apps, your social media, um, you know, email marketing, all of those things that are done, um, you know, on the web to help reach out to customers. And, you know, I think often I talk to people who, you know, maybe haven't done a lot of digital marketing yet, um, or maybe, you know, are looking to, you know, consider whether it's something they want to do. Um, but it really is an important part of doing business um, in the modern world. As we all know, people are spending more and more time online, um, on mobile devices, on phones, on tablets, uh, and that's really where they're accessing most of their information now. And so it's important to be there. Um, online, you know, digital marketing in general allows you to reach a much wider audience than if you're just focusing on, you know, more localized and more traditional types of marketing. Um, and, and not to say that those things are not valuable and that you shouldn't continue to do those, but I think digital marketing really has to be a part of just about every business's, um, you know, marketing plan for sure. Um, and, you know, I think we always think in terms of you know, gaining new customers and making more sales when we think about marketing. But then, you know, another really important part of digital marketing is that it makes it much easier to increase your brand awareness um, because of that wide visibility. More people are seeing your logo, they're seeing videos, they're seeing your website. Um, you know, people that maybe wouldn't have necessarily found you in a local market. Um, <clears throat> The other thing that's really important with digital marketing is it really helps to drive traffic to your business and to your website. Um, and all of these things together just equate to more leads and then ultimately more sales. So I guess the key word would be exposure. I think that's the biggest benefit with digital marketing is the amount of exposure that you can get that you don't necessarily get as easily with other types of media. So, you know, I think when I talk to people often who are in the early stages of planning digital marketing, uh, you know, they don't necessarily always know where to start. Um, and I think, you know, the other kind of misnomer is that, 
you know, this is all free and easy, and, and that's not necessarily true as well. But there are some things and I think are important to do before you really start any digital marketing effort or really any marketing effort at all for that matter. Um, but particularly with digital marketing, because I think you need to be more specific um, in your marketing efforts and what you're saying. Um, so these are a few things I think that are important for you to, to be thinking about, to be doing, um, you know, as you're going through the planning process of deciding how are you going to market digitally and, and um, you know, what your strategy is going to be. And so with any marketing, the first thing that's really, really important is to know what your target market is. Know who, are, who the customers are that you're trying to reach and that would be the most interested in the products and services that you have available. <clears throat> and so you have to really think about who those customers are and what you know about them. Um, so thinking about, you know, how old are they? Um, you know, are they married or are they single? Are they male or female? Uh, what level of education might they have? Do they have a family? Um, you know, where do they live and work? Um, what kinds of work are they involved in? What might their hobbies be? Um, so any, you know, characteristics or details that you can think of that will help you identify who those customers are. And there's a couple of kind of ways to do that. Um, you know, some tools that I find are helpful. Um, and one of those is thinking about creating customer personas. So that's really just kind of, you know, creating almost an avatar or, you know, a, a profile of who that customer is. And so it's in a generalization, obviously, you're going to have some customers that are outliers that, that maybe don't necessarily fall into this exact description, but, you know, creating that persona of, you know, customer A is a female age 35 to 40 with an income of a certain amount and works in a professional um, position. Um, and then maybe customer persona two is a male age 50 to 55 working in a different industry. So kind of thinking about those. Um, for some businesses, it's also helpful to think in terms of customer groups um, you know, or, or thinking about the time frame. Um, throughout the day of your business or throughout the week or month of your business. And so a good example of that, you know, something that's really kind of simple and easy to comprehend is, is with a restaurant. And so I tell people to, to think about, you know, if you serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner, think about those customer groups. So, you know, who are the customers that are coming in for breakfast? Maybe it's, um, you know, some people who are retired who come in for, for their breakfast and kind of hang around for coffee and, and visit with, with people. And maybe some of your breakfast customers are people rushing on their way to work and just stopping in to pick up something um, quick to go. Um, and then at lunchtime, you may have different customer groups and then the dinner crowd may be different again. Um, so for some businesses, it's easy to kind of break things down in that way. But whatever way fits for your business, I think the key is it's important to know who the customers are that you're trying to reach because that's going to drive what digital tools you use to reach them. So the other thing that I think is very important is being able to define your brand. And this is something that, that doesn't necessarily happen overnight. And I know a lot of businesses that I talk to on a regular basis kind of struggle with this, especially in early stages. Um, but your brand is basically kind of creating the, the universe or the community um, that, that is centered around your customers. Um, and so that includes things like your culture, you know, who you are, what do you represent, what are your values, um, and your story, um, you know, the backstory of, you know, you as an owner and how your business started, and what it is that you say to your customers about this company. Um, you know, what's the story that they hear to help them to get to know your business? Um, Another part of that brand is the product. Um, you know, obviously what you sell, um, you know, the products that you sell, the services you provide are part of that brand. And, and I think that's something that's important to keep in mind as your business grows, because a lot of times it's very easy to get off brand with product or service offerings, um, because sometimes opportunities come up and you think, well, gee, maybe I should start offering this service because people are asking for it. But, um, it's not always the best decision if it's something that, that's going to be off brand for you. So be thinking about, you know, what is the menu of products and services that you provide and, and how does that reflect, you know, overall with your company. Um, experience, I think, is a big part of your brand. Um, you know, that's how you make customers feel, um, you know, 
how do they feel when they interact with you? Have you made their life easier? Do they feel satisfied with your product or service? Has it made their life better or easier in some way? Um, and, you know, are they likely to tell someone else to, to, you know, use your business because of that? And then identity is kind of the last piece of this, and it's how you're perceived. You know, what do people think of when they hear your business name or they walk into your location or they look at your website? Um, you know, is it, you know, is it friendly? Is it, um, you know, they identify you as, as maybe, um, you know, eco-conscious? Do they identify you as, you know, um, efficient? Um, you know, what is it that, that comes to mind for your customers when they look at you and your business? Um, and so these are all things that you want to kind of be crafting as you start and grow your business. Um, and it reflects in, in everything that you put out for the public. So, you know, the way your website is designed, your logo, um, your packaging materials, um, you know, the narrative and, and the content that's in your social media and on your website um, and in the marketing materials it creates. So it's all kind of focused on that, that brand and it's all consistent. So someone looks at your website and recognizes immediately that, you're, that it's your company and what it represents. Um, and that they don't look at, you know, your, your business card and see something different. You want to make sure that there's consistency there. And I think that's a big part of making all marketing, but especially digital marketing, very effective is having that kind of consistency. Um, and so lastly, there are a few kind of, you know, building blocks or, or you know, pieces of the puzzle that you, I think, need. Um, you know, and these are all things that will come over time, but I also think, if you're just starting out and thinking about digital marketing or maybe honing your digital marketing strategy, um, these are things that if you have at the ready are gonna make that transition to digital marketing or to new um, avenues of digital marketing very easy. Um, one of those is the business email. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, at yourcompany.com. It could be a Gmail, um, you know, or something to that effect, um, but making sure that it reflects your business. Um, so that the business name is in there. It's not, you know, just like, you know, Joe the Clown at, you know, yahoo.com, um, unless you're a clown and then it would help. <laughs> but if you're not a clown, that's not a good, uh, not a good email. Um, and we've all seen those emails that, you know, come across as not looking real professional and real business-like. You want to avoid that. Um, you also want to have, you know, a nice catalog of good quality photos. And so that would include, you know, things like photos of your product, um, but also, you know, photo, photos of your business in action, you providing service or, um, you know, waiting on customers or, you know, activity in your store, um, you know, any types of photos that are going to reflect what you do in various settings, um, you know, with, um, you know, different types of, of um, setups and different you know, types of, of focus. So some may be focused more on product, whereas others are more focused on the faces of the people that work for you. Um, and so these are things that, you know, if, if you have a budget for a professional photographer, that's fabulous. Um, and I would encourage you to do that if you do. Um, but even if you don't have a budget for professional photography, uh, but, you know, you could Google a lot of really good advice about how to take good photos just, you know, with, um, you know, with your cell phone. Um, and there are a lot of great ways to get some really good photos um, that you can use in digital marketing. And so you could do a little bit of searching and, and figure out some things about that. Um, and if you meet with an SBDC advisor, we can give you a few ideas as well. Um, it may also be a good idea to kind of start putting together a video library as well. Um, you know, and, and, you know, thinking about you know, again, the messaging that you want to send to people, um, they don't have to be long. They don't necessarily have to be professionally done. Again, if you have a budget for a professional videographer, that's wonderful. But if not, um, you know, there's a lot that you can do. And again, you, know, you could do a simple Google search for ideas of, you know, what types of video content. Um, but, you know, customer testimonials, if you have customers who are uh, willing to talk on camera, you know, just videos of the activity inside your business, um, you know, videos of the people who work in your business and the processes that are involved in your business, um, particularly if you're manufacturing or producing anything, um, you know, videos of that process and, and the pieces and, and how they go into place are, is very helpful. 
Um, another thing that's really important to have as you start out, you know, in, in looking at digital marketing is to have a logo. Um, this is something I would recommend that you get some, some good professional service on. This doesn't have to be terribly expensive, but you do want to make sure that you have a logo um, that can work in different formats. Um, and I don't know the technical terms for all the different formats, but there's, you know, different formats that can be used in different places. So, you know, one that's preferred for websites and one that's preferred for print. Um, you know, you want some color, you want a, a logo that's in black and white. Um, you want to make sure that you have a logo that's got a clear background so that you can place it on any colored background and it still looks good. Um, so if someone's developing a logo for you, this is, you know, for the most part, pretty standard stuff that they give you, but, um, you know, if not, it's a conversation you can have with a service provider to say, hey, this is, this is what I need, and, and they can give you some suggestions. Um, another thing I think that's helpful with digital marketing, because, you know, the thing about digital marketing is that a lot of the information you're providing is in print, it's a narrative, or that in combination with photos and videos. And if you aren't used to communicating that way, if you're a more verbal person, um, sometimes that can be a challenge in, you know, well, what do I write next? What do I say? How do I say it? So, you know, before you even start putting together your digital marketing strategy and, and starting to act on things, you can be putting together things like descriptions of your business, um, you know, descriptions of your product, descriptions of, you know, how your business got started and what the backstory is. Um, and so, you know, kind of starting to craft that information ahead of time. Um, so that you're not under the pressure of, oh, I want to make this Facebook post or I want to build this website, but I don't know what to say. Um, and so a lot of this information can transfer between, um, you know, what you put on a website and can be paired down to put in social media and can be used in, uh, you know, email marketing. So um, I think sometimes kind of figuring out what you're going to say and how you're going to say it ahead of time helps, I think, with, with the transition of, you know, starting digital marketing. Um, you know, and making sure that this is in your voice. And by that, I don't mean you as an individual person, but meaning, you know, again, thinking back to, um, you know, when we talked about branding, that consistency. How do you talk about your business? Um, you know, when you describe the business, it should sound the same on your website as it does in your social media. Um, you know, using kind of some of the same keywords, the same types of phrases. Um, and so it's really helpful to kind of just have thought out how you want to say things in addition to, to what you're going to say. Um, the other thing I think that's a very important thing to have or to plan to have um, with digital marketing is time. Because I think a lot of times we hear about, you know, digital marketing being um, free and or cheap, depending on what you do. Um, and in some cases that's true, but there's a cost for everything. So even the things that are free are going to cost you time. And I think you know, for a lot of the people that I talk with on a regular basis, time is one of the biggest challenges and finding the time to manage social media, to manage your website, to do all of those things and make sure that they're consistent and they're working like they should. And so, you know, there are ways to, to kind of help manage that. And we'll talk a little bit about some of that. Um, but, you know, just kind of coming into this with the knowledge that it's going to take some time and figuring out how much time do you have to dedicate to this? And with that time, what are you going to be able to do? Um, I think a pretty common challenge is that a lot of people say, oh, I need a website and I need social media and I need to, you know, have three social media sites and I need to do email marketing and I need to do text marketing and all of these things. Then it becomes overwhelming. And what happens is, you know, none of them get done or maybe a couple of them get done sort of okay. Um, I think it's a much better strategy to pick the things that you've got the time for that you can manage well and do well, um, and then, you know, figure the rest out later. Um, maybe you end up hiring someone to do those things for you. Um, maybe it's things that you can adjust your schedule and have more time to dedicate to if you want to, but, you know, it doesn't have to be all at once, you know, all or nothing. So I'm going to talk now about some of the specific tools that you have at your disposal for digital marketing. Um, and again, with the idea that I'm not covering everything, I am certainly not an expert in this. I kind of know, you know the general overview of how this all works together. Um, I can't always necessarily tell you, you know, what button to click or, or you know, where to put your cursor to accomplish some of this stuff. Um, but the general concepts are going to be the same. And so what I'm going to do is cover 
you know, some of the, the marketing tools that are, that I find are the most useful for most of my clients. Um, you know, some of you are going to find some other things that, you know, don't fall into this category. Maybe some of the things we talk about are not going to match up well with you or your business. But I think in general terms, these are things that are pretty common to most businesses in Northern New York and the businesses that I work with are, these are the most common things. Um, and so a website is kind of the foundation of all of this. Um, you know, I talk to a lot of people who are really reluctant to have a website. Um, it does not have to be complicated. It can be relatively simple to manage. And I think it, it kind of gets overwhelming. Um, if you want to do a website and you want e-commerce and you want to be able to sell stuff from your website, yes, obviously that's going to be a little more involved. But even a basic website with general information like about our company and your hours of operation and maybe highlighting some of your products um, is really still a good foundation to start with. The nice thing about a website is it's your opportunity to provide information to people in much more detail than you can in a lot of these other things that we're going to talk about. Um, and, and, you know, this is where I think people go often to get that more detailed information and to do a little bit more of a deep dive. They may find you on social media, but then they want to look at your website to get a little bit more information. And that's a really nice, um, you know, tool to accomplish that with. Like I said, it can be relatively simple to start. It could just be, a, you know, a few basic pages of information. The nice thing about a website, and I think, you know, what has happened is because social media has become so prevalent, um, you know, a lot of times people will say to me, well, I don't, you know, I, I have a really great Facebook following and I'm, I'm on, you know, Instagram or whatever other social is out there. And, you know, that gets me a lot of customers. I don't know that I really need a website. Um, but I think the thing to think about is that, you know, your website lends a lot of legitimacy to the other things that you're going to do in digital marketing. So, um, you know, all of this kind of ties back to search engine optimization, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but I think when you have a website, um, you know, social media platforms recognize that they see your website listed, they can tell that it's legitimate. Um, and so that helps you get more views and, and it, you know, it helps with your Google listing because you've got a website that's linked there. So you're more likely, um, you know, to, to reach people. And so the website really is the foundation and kind of links back to all of these other things. Um, so there are a few DIY website options. And again, this is a case of, you know, looking at you know, what I encourage people to do is kind of look at some of these options, go in and play around with them, see what feels comfortable to you, what fits. If you're finding if this is just something that you're not, you know, wanting or able to, to figure out, um, you know, talk to a service provider. Um, and I know sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow um, to find a budget, but, you know, talking to several service providers, talking to someone at the SBDC about what it is you need and, and you know, what to be looking for in a service provider. Um, will help. But you may also find that if you kind of look at some of these do-it-yourself options that, you know, a lot of them are very simple. Um, the easiest are the plug-and-play types of, of formats. Um, Wix and Weebly are the ones that I see people use the most. Um, you know, relatively simple to, to start. And if you've got good, good content, good narrative, and some good photos, um, you know, it's really pretty simple. You can select a template and you can customize it with your own wording and, and videos. You can change around fonts and color schemes. Um, so there's a lot of options there and, and it really is relatively user friendly. Um, if you have more of an e-commerce focus, if you're wanting to, you know, do a lot of sales online and, and post products or, you know, um, things like that, um, some good options are Shopify and Square. Wix and Weebly also have e-commerce um, options as well, but I think the ones that are really developed specifically for e-commerce and, and have that special focus are Shopify and Square. Again, there are others out there, but these are the ones that I see most commonly used by people. Um, one that's used quite a bit, but that's really for people with a little bit more advanced technical skill is WordPress. Um, I've had some people who, you know, with a little bit of um, you know, technical or digital background have had good success with that. If you're very, very beginner, um, you know, and, and something like plug and play is more your, your level, um, then you may want to stay away from WordPress. Um, the nice thing about it is that it is more um, customizable. I think you can get 
something that's much more, um, you know, uniquely designed to you. Um, but obviously that in exchange for that, you have to have the technical skills to do it. But these are some of those options. Um, and like I said, you know, sit down with an SBDC advisor or someone at Inca, kind of go through the options, help your help to help you evaluate that, um, looking at, you know, what things you might do um, and what service providers are out there to help with, um, you know, these types of development if it, you decide is something that, that you can't do. So, you know, we can't really talk about websites without talking about search engine optimization or SEO. Um, and so essentially SEO is all of the things that you do to get your website to come up on an organic search. So that when someone is searching for a product or a service that you offer, that you're likely to come up in their listing. And so if you have good search engine optimization, and we're gonna talk about some of the things that, that go into making um, good SEO, um, you know, really all that means is that you're getting better traffic to your website. You're getting people who are actually interested in what you have to say and what you have to sell. Um, and so it's kind of, I always tell people to kind of think of it as like, you know, matchmaking by Google. They've got this website for this business over here and somebody is looking for something that that business sells. And Google says, oh, hey, look, here's this company over here. Take a look at what they have. Um, and the better SEO you have, the more likely they are to be pointing the right people to you. So you don't have people that come to your website and click on it and go, oh, this isn't what I was looking for at all. Um, so it's kind of, you know, the efforts that you make to make sure that the right people are finding you. Um, the other thing that good SEO can do for you is to have increased quantity of traffic as well, because if you're showing up in a search, you're more likely to have people to click on your website, more likely to have people find you. Um, and you know the idea is that you know if your website's designed really well, once they get there, we wanna convert them to a customer. We wanna make a sale or we wanna have them reach out to you for information or send an email or you know whatever the case may be. So I'm going to, if I can do this without screwing everything up, show you what I mean by SEO. And so, You don't want my calendar. So this is what we call an organic search. So I did a search here for how to get rid of garden pests naturally. So gardening season is coming up. And Michelle, I don't think we can see what you're seeing. Oh, you know what? Right, I didn't change the sharing let's do that thank you okay now so you should be able to see my google search right yep yep it's working now. perfect great thanks um, so yeah, so what I did was this search for how to get rid of garden pests. And you'll see here, we've got some sponsored things here. These are, you know, people who have paid to have their listings show up and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but when I did this, you know, what comes up is an article from HGTV um, and another article from the Farmer's Almanac and another article. So some really good articles in terms of, um, you know, how to get rid of garden pests. And so if you're a company that sells options for getting rid of garden pests, what you might do is have a section in your website that explains here are some ways that you can get rid of garden pests. Um, and that information is relevant to me. And so if you're doing it the right way, Google will say, oh, hey, look, here's a company that's right near you that has this information on their website and that would pop up. And so that's the idea is that you want, you know, your Google searches or, or your customers' Google searches to match your information. And so it does take a little bit of time to build up. Um, it's definitely not something that happens overnight, but it is something, um, you know, that you can work on and, and can give you some results. So here are some things to think about um, when 
you're developing your website, and, and even if you have someone build the website for you, I just want to back up a minute. Um, when you have a service provider who's creating your website for you, it's still important that the information that's going to go on the website comes from you. Um, and so this is where, you know, when I talked about before, like describing your business, describing your products, creating that narrative or the content that's going to go in there. Um, because there really is no better person than you to talk about your own business. Um, and it helps to keep everything on brand. Um, so I think, you know, your website development goes much more smoothly if you can provide your um, website developer with that information to start with. And there may be changes or tweaks to it, or they may have suggestions to make. Um, but I think when that basis, you know, comes from you to start with, it results in a, in a better, um, you know, end result. So, you know, things to think about, whether it's your own website that you're developing or you're working with a website developer, things that contribute to, you know, having good SEO results is that the website's easy to navigate. That means that there's, you know, menus that people can go to, a menu up at the top corner where people can find various pages or maybe down the left-hand side, but people are easily able to navigate from one part of the website to the other and, and know what they're looking at and where to find things. Um, you know, obviously the site has to load quickly. I'm, I'm sure we've all been there where we've clicked on a website that's just taken forever to pop up and we just get frustrated and, and leave. So you wanna make sure of that. Again, a developer can kind of help you to, to know how to accomplish that. Um, on your website, you've gotta have places that, that call the customer to action, places where they can click for order now, or, you know, send us an email or, you know, follow us on social media. Um, you know, places where they can be taken right to the action that you want them to take. Um, the other really important thing is to make sure that your website is optimized for mobile, which I think is pretty standard now with most developers and, and all of those DIY sites that, that I, um, you know, showed to you incorporate that. Um, but still, it's something important to not forget, um, you know, making sure that People can easily view your website and understand it and see it, whether they're on a, a desktop computer or a laptop or a mobile phone or a tablet or whatever the device might be. The other thing I think that's really important to remember as you're, you know, kind of developing your, your digital marketing strategies is that the content in, in, in your website, but then all, a lot of your other um, digital marketing efforts as well, content drives search engine optimization or SEO. So what that means is that the information that you're providing on your website or in, in all of your digital presence is really how Google decides how they're going to match you up. And so you have to make sure that the information on your website and on your social media and all of the other things you do is relevant. Um, so, you know, if I'm a garden supply store, I don't necessarily need to have information on my website about, um, you know, the local school board race or whatever the case might be. Um, you want to make sure that it's easy to read. So that goes to, you know, some of it is graphic design, what color the background is and what color the text is. Um, but also that you're not, particularly if you're in an industry where there's a lot of, um, you know, technical terms or industry jargon that you don't overload the content with that. So that someone who's maybe not sure of what they need to buy or not sure of, of what information or services they need that they don't get overwhelmed and scared away. So trying to explain things in simple terms that, that most people would be able to understand. Um, it needs to be credible. So, you know, obviously you wanna be honest and truthful. You wanna make sure that, you know, you're, you're providing accurate information about the things that you can do so that people aren't feeling like they, they've been um, 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 deceived. Um, obviously honest, you wanna not include false information on your website um, and accurate information. Um, so, you know, if you're selling items, you wanna make sure your, your pricing is accurate. If it's a service business, you know, making sure that your hourly rates are accurate, making sure that you're doing updates as things change. If your hours change, um, you know, anything like that, making sure that those things are reflected on your website so that it's accurate. Um, and then something that, that we, probably aren't going to have time to get into in a lot of detail today. Um, but, you know, remembering the key words and key phrases that are used in your narrative and in your content on your website are really important for SEO. And so, you know, I think, you know, people used to get coached of, you know, here are the, the 20 key words that people are going to use when they search for, you know, pest control in their garden. And you have to make sure those are on your website. Um, what I find 
works better is to just talk naturally about what you do, because chances are, if you've been in this industry and you've been in that business for a period of time, you already know the things that people need to know, and you already know the terms that they're going to be, um, you know, thinking about or that they need to know about or that they're going to be asking about. So I tell people, you know, start off with, you know, putting together narrative for your website, just from your own voice and your own experience. And chances are those keywords are going to pop up. And so, you know, again, using that same example of the garden store, I'll probably have, you know, a page on my website talking about pest control. And I would mention, you know, you know, we help you find pest control for, you know, mice and moles and rabbits and deer. Um, and someone who Googles how to keep deer out of my garden could potentially be seeing that page of your website. So it kind of happens naturally um, when you're including the kinds of details that you typically would include for your customers on your website. But it is something to keep in mind as you're, you know, working on developing your website and your content. Um, and for all of your other digital marketing things as well. Oops. Too far. Okay. Um, so the other um, digital marketing tool, I think that's you know one of the the good foundations for having good digital marketing overall is your Google My Business listing. Um, and I'm still blown away by how many people do not have this. Um, it's free, it's very simple to do, um, but you wanna make sure that your presence on Google is verified and that all the information is accurate. And I will actually show you what that looks like, um, just in case you aren't entirely sure. Um, Cause I think a lot of people don't necessarily know that there's a specific name for this, but you've all seen it before. Okay, so this is the Google listing for the SUNY Canton Small Business Development Center. You can see it right over here on the right-hand side of the page. And so you've all seen this before. When you search for a place, then, you know, or a business or, you know, any kind of physical location, this listing comes up on the right-hand side of the page. And it always has this map up at the top that you can click on to get directions. Um, and then there's a link here for your website, a click you know, for directions, um, people have the option to save it. And then you can also link it to your, your phone number, um, a short description. It links to the Google reviews that you might have, your address, hours, which I see here that our SBDC is not up to date on our hours. So a good example of not what to do. Um, and the phone number, you can add information. Um, you can add photos in this profile. There's all kinds of information that you can add so that people can click on this and get more detailed information. But the basics are that you want it to come up on the right-hand side of the page like this so that people can click to get to your website and call. I think those are the, and, and the directions. Those are the three key components to that. Um, the website is, is here in the presentation where you can go to claim that listing if you haven't done it already. There's a verification process that you go through um, and that basically gives you access to say, yes, this is my business and you have the ability to go in there and, um, and you know, do edits and, and share as you see fit. So right here, it's google.com backslash business. Um, you know, again, it's a relatively simple process. If you get stuck on it or you need help, certainly you know, give us a call and we can help you walk through that. But this is one of the, the again, the main foundations. Um, remember how I mentioned these things all work together. So you know, when you have a website, it's linked to this listing. So that shows Google, oh, this is a legitimate business. They've linked their website. They've got a website presence. You know these things kind of work together. So that gets you a little bit more recognition when someone's searching.
Um, another option, and, and Google has a lot of marketing options and a lot of tools that we could probably do a whole other session about, um, but these are kind of the two I think that are most important. Um, you know, and again, so, you know, the Google listing is free. The website, depending on your, your level of tech ability, could potentially be, you know, somewhat free, probably low cost because you will have to pay for hosting and things like that. Um, if you had more of a budget and you wanted to do a little bit more, Google Ads could be a good option. Um, and those are basically what we call pay-per-click ads, which means you only pay when someone clicks on the ad. Um, and so, you know, this serves a couple of purposes. One of those is that, you know, we talk about all the things that you need to do to have good SEO, you know, having your website and having it connected with your Google listing. And we'll talk about some of those other things with social media as well. Um, but that takes time to develop. If you build your website today and you start doing this stuff this week, um, you're not necessarily going to have a million people clicking on your website in the next five days. It takes time. And, and that's part of, you know, the benefit of having good SEO is that, you know, it takes time for Google to realize, oh, okay, you've done X, Y, Z, you are legitimate. And, and for, you know, kind of, a, a, you know, appearance, you know, that, that you're, legitimate and doing what you should be doing and that you have followers and you have customers and, and history. Um, so it takes a little while for that to, to kind of register to help start getting your SEO to work better. Google ads work more quickly. They can get you some additional followers in a relatively short amount of time. It gets you a bigger audience than just what we call organic um, you know, SEO does. And organic SEO is basically just, you know, you put your website up, you did all the right things, and things are going to happen for you naturally. Um, and they will, but like I said, it takes a little more time. So, you know, the nice thing about Google ads is you can tweak them to reach a specific group of people, or, um, you know, they can be directed toward people with a certain interest or in a certain geography. So they're much more um, able to be focused than just your organic, you know, SEO efforts. So a good way to think of it is that, you know, SEO builds your online presence for the long term um, over time, which is valuable. It's not that it's not valuable, but pay-per-click kind of provides that boost in the short term. And so if you have maybe a new product or service that you really want to direct to a specific group of customers, it can help to give you that boost. Um, or if you're just starting out and you just need that leg up to get some, some people onto your website and get some traffic, it can help out with that as well. And so... You know, this is a controllable expense. You set your budget when you go in, um, you know, to, to set this up. So if you know you have a budget of $100, then that's all you'll pay. So it's not something where you're going to get, you know, trapped into paying, you know, lots and lots of money that you don't have. Um, so I'm going to start talking about social media, which I think lots of times when we say digital marketing, I think social media is the first thing that comes to people's mind. And, you know, as you've realized by now, I'm sure that's just a component of it. Um, but it's a big component and it's important. Um, again, it works along with all of these other tools. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give you a really brief overview of the options that you have in terms of social media um, and, you know, generally how they work and, and who they reach. Um, and then, you know, I would suggest if you're not sure what to do with social media or which which uh, platforms to use, that's something that we could help out with at the SBDC is looking at your target market and helping you kind of match up where where you should be. Facebook, I think, is you know they're the original almost. Um, you know everybody knows what Facebook is, um, how it works for the most part, you know what it can do. Um, Facebook generally, their, their biggest group of customers is people ages 25 to 34, slightly more males than females, but pretty, pretty closely split. Um, and again, this is the biggest group of followers or, or yeah, I guess people who use Facebook. Um, but remember that that does extend into older age groups as well. Um, you know, over time, Facebook has, has been less and less about younger participants and more and more about 25 to 34 and then even higher than that um, you know as as you know people more and more people have gotten used to it so it does have a very wide audience although this is the biggest customer group um, that they have it's a it's a much bigger span than that in general um, 
on Facebook, um, photos and in particular videos get more attention. So when you're posting on Facebook and you just type in some text, it's not as likely to get as much attention as a video or a photo and especially videos. Um, you know, people view these more. Uh, Facebook actually shows them to more people um, and they get shared more than just, you know, straight text. So that's something to think about is, um, you know, what kinds of photos and videos you might be able to use on Facebook to help get more followers and bring attention to your business. Another nice thing about Facebook is it's really good for frequent customer interaction. If you're managing it well, um, you know, customers can message you, they can post something on your website, they can pose a question, they can ask you to get certain products, they can give you feedback, and you're able to respond, um, you know, right away. So that's one of the nice, nice features of Facebook. Um, and so that's probably the one I would say, you know, of all the businesses I work with, that's the one that the vast majority um, use for sure. Um, Instagram is another one that I see a lot of people using, um, you know, somewhat similar to Facebook in terms of how it functions and what it does. Um, but its emphasis is more on, you know, photos and short form videos, really short videos. Um, so it's a more visual platform than Facebook is. So it works really well for businesses that have a very photogenic product. So, you know, a creative business, um, you know, people who handcraft things and want to be able to show a lot of detail. Um, you know, and it's particularly good for industries like lifestyle, food, fashion, places where we can show photos of, of you know, products and services and, and um, those types of things that tend to be very visually appealing. Instagram trends a little bit. Um, younger audience than Facebook, 18 to 34 is their biggest um, biggest age group. Um, again, I think that you know includes some older age groups and maybe some younger as well. Um, but this is the biggest the biggest portion. Um, again, almost evenly split male and female, almost 50 50. The other thing that's kind of nice about um, Instagram is that you can use hashtags in your posts and that helps people find your information. Um, so when someone goes to Instagram to search, if you have a hashtag, so like let's say they're searching for, you know, let's keep up with the, the garden theme. Um, they're searching for, um, you know, uh, I want to tour a rose garden. So they put hashtag rose garden tour and every rose garden tour would come up on Instagram. Um, so, you know, there's some things you can do to kind of make yourself a little more searchable on Instagram. So LinkedIn is another social media platform that tends to be a little bit more geared towards services and professionals. Um, this is a typo. It's not age 25 to 24. It's 25 to 34 is their biggest group. Um, and again, almost equally male and female. Good for service businesses. Um, LinkedIn is much less. Um, you know, visually and video focused, although you can use photos and video on Instagram or on, on LinkedIn, I'm sorry. Um, it's much less of the focus. It's more um, centered on networking, um, you know, making connections with other people in your industry or potential customers. Um, more focused on information sharing. So, you know, sharing information about your company, your company's growth, um, new services, you know, professional accomplishments, those kinds of things. Um, so I find that LinkedIn is really good, not just for the networking, but also for kind of building credibility. It's a place where people can go to learn about you and your company um, and see some of the background. And, and that's where you would feature things like certifications and specialties and really industry specific stuff that people will be able to look at that and say, oh yeah, this person really knows what they're, what they're doing. Um, YouTube is another one that's um, you know, being used by a lot of people. Um, this one does have an age range that goes a little bit lower, ages 15 to 35. Um, you know, again, that's the biggest customer group. It certainly reaches customers older than that. Um, slightly more male than female with this one, but most of these social media platforms are pretty close to even male, female. If there is a variation, it's, it's usually you know, less than, than 10%. Um, YouTube is actually the second largest search engine after Google, um, because why? If I've got a, you know, 
change the pipe on under my sink, where am I going to go to find out how to do that? I'm going to YouTube it, right? And so people search for things on YouTube because they know they can get, you know, tutorials and videos that, that walk them through it. Um, YouTube is actually owned by Google. So having a YouTube account that's active and, and vibrant helps with your Google search. Um, so that's an important connection. Um, Again, YouTube is really good for longer types of videos. So, you know, you may have like maybe a 30 second video on Instagram, whereas YouTube, it could be several minutes, you know, even longer. I've seen some that are, you know, an hour. Um, and so you can do a lot of things with YouTube. If you have a business where you can give how to videos, that's a really great way to kind of build your following and, and also provide customers with information, which hopefully, you know, at some point would lead them to, to making a purchase. Um, it's also really good if you do training, um, you know, service um, providers that do webinars, um, you know, post their webinars to YouTube for public information. And so that SBDC does that with a lot of the webinars that we record, and I'm sure Anka does as well. Um, so, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you can, if you're a manufacturer or you produce a product, it's a really great way to show your process, have videos of all the different, you know, steps in the process, getting to the to finished product. Um, so it's a really great way to kind of give a little bit more detailed information than you do in some of these other types of social media um, and making it kind of a little bit more interactive with the video. And so those are, you know, for me, I think the main ones that could benefit the majority of businesses um, and that I see a lot of people having success with. There are lots and lots of other options, probably some I don't even know about that aren't listed on here, but you know, some of the other big ones are TikTok, again, a, a video platform, uh, more, more short form. Pinterest, which is based on, you know, kind of like photos and links that people can, can choose by area of interest. Um, Snapchat, which is kind of like a, I always kind of compare it to like a kind of a mini, a mini TikTok um, or a mini, you know, Facebook, it's, um, you know, very small snippets that don't live on the internet for long if you don't choose for them to. Um, and then Twitter, which is more, um, you know, photo and video can be used in there, but it's a little bit more, um, you know, conversation and, and verbally focused. So it's a lot to choose from. And I think what I find is the biggest challenge with a lot of the businesses I work with is that they see this list of all of these social media platforms and they say, oh, I've got to do my website and I've got to do Facebook and I've got to do LinkedIn and I've got to do this and I've got to do that, um, which is virtually impossible for most businesses to manage. Um, so what I tell people is, you know, start by picking one or two social media channels that you feel like you're comfortable with, that reach your audience and that you can manage. Maybe it's just one, maybe it's two, but find a place to start that's manageable. Um, you know, very few businesses can successfully be on all of those channels. Um, and if they do, they probably have a staff that manages those things. Um, it's not the business owner, as I suspect many of you are, you know, kind of trying to wear all the hats. Um, so don't let it overwhelm you. Pick the ones that you think are going to be the best match um, and the ones that you have time to manage and go with that. And, you know, if you pick the others up later, that's great. So, you know, the other thing I think that it's important to remember, and I've mentioned this a couple different times, but it, it bears repeating, is that all of these tools work together to get you results. So if you have a website, yes, you're probably going to have some success with digital marketing and gaining some more customers and some more sales. If you have your Google listing updated, yes, that's going to help you as well. If you have a Facebook account, that's going to help you. If you have all three of those things, the results are going to be exponentially better because, again, they all work together. Google looks out there to see, you know, it's kind of like a little bit of a background check. Okay, here's ABC Business. Do they have a website? No. Well, but they have a Facebook page. So, you know, it's pretty close. That's, that's a point in their favor. And they claim their Google listing. So that gives them some legitimacy. Um, and there are some other things that go into it. I'm oversimplifying. But the idea is that, you know, the more digital presence you can have, um, and, and quality digital presence, so, you know, a good website, well-designed that people, um, you know, access regularly. Um, all of these things work together. And, and again, social media does the same thing. When you create your account and you put your website in, one thing they look at is, is this a legitimate website? Um, you know, does it have activity? 
do they link back to our the Facebook page from the website? All of those things. So, um, you know, keeping them kind of in sync and using them all together is the best way for digital marketing to work for you. So again, it goes back to what you have time to manage. Um, you know, if you're limited on time, my suggestion would be, you know, a basic website, getting your Google listing updated and, you know, having at least one social media, maybe two, depending on what you have time to manage. Um, and then kind of having a regular schedule of keeping, making sure things are updated and things like that. Um, so, you know, the idea is that you want to increase your digital footprint. You want people to be able to find you in multiple places online, depending on what their needs are, depending on where they're comfortable for looking. And ultimately, all of that will lead to more customers and hopefully more sales. And so we're also going to talk about email marketing, because even though that's not a website or a social media platform, it is digital, obviously. Um, and I think, you know, email marketing has kind of gotten a bad rap <laughs> in the last few years. Social media kind of came on the scene and everybody's like, yeah, we don't need email marketing anymore. Um, but it does have some real value um, and it could do a lot of things. One of those things is that you can, you know, generate automated responses for various situations. So, you know, if you have a website and someone makes a purchase, you can have an automated email response and say, thank you for your order. Here's your order summary. Um, you know, I, if you've got your website set up to do a notification, if someone um, abandons their shopping cart, you can send a little reminder that says, hey, you know, maybe you forgot to check out. Um, you can thank someone if they sign up on your website to get a newsletter or to join your email list. You can have an auto uh, response that comes in that says, hey, thanks for joining our email list. We hope you like our products or whatever. Um, one of the key things that email marketing is good for is distribution of newsletters. Um, and so I think a lot of times people get very overwhelmed by this concept and they think, oh, I have to write a newsletter. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, a huge, you know, newsletter pages on pages of information and maybe just two or three little snippets and it doesn't have to be every week. It doesn't even have to be every month. It could be quarterly, um, but it's a good way to share information with your customers and your community. Um, and you can feature things like, you know, seasonal specials or, um, you know, maybe, you know, things that happen in your industry. If somebody got a new certification or if you hire a new employee, um, maybe honoring employees anniversaries or things like that, just kind of inside information about your business that customers would be interested in and, and just helps them to get to know you a little bit better. Um, obviously, you can use email to share sales and promotions to make sure that people are aware of when you're having a sale and what special promotion you have so they can take advantage to them. I think if you have a really well-developed email list, and that means that it's come from you, from your website, uh, from your social media, uh, from contacts you've collected with purchase transactions, you know, maybe when they check out, they enter an email. Um, there are email lists that you can purchase, and I wouldn't advise that. There's, there's a lot of risk involved with that, and you never know if you're going to get, you know, necessarily something that's good. Um, but if you're generating your own contact list from your own customer base and your own contacts, you're, you know you're reaching the right people. Um, and so that's a good way to do it. The two most common um, vehicles that I see people use for email marketing is MailChimp and Constant Contact. Um, they both allow you to set up an Excel spreadsheet with all of your contacts in it, and then you can import it into the program. Um, they have some really nice design tools so that the emails come out looking really professional. Um, so it's something to take a look at. Um, there is a fee for the service, depending on, I think it's based on how many contacts you have, um, but it's not an outrageous amount of money um, and it's something to take a look at. And there are so many other options that, that we didn't even get to. Um, you know, blogs are a good, way to, um, you know, market your business online. Um, text message marketing is an option. Uh, developing a mobile app. Um, there are a lot of businesses now that have their own mobile app that goes directly to their website, so that's an option. Um, we talked about pay-per-click ads on Google, but we didn't talk about social media ads. They, had, they all offer paid ad platforms as well. Um, most social media 
well, I should say most, but a lot of social media provides um, live events where you can do kind of live videos while you're doing things that people can join and watch. Um, and then another digital marketing tool that we didn't get to talk about um, is directories, um, you know, looking, you know, very similar to the Google listing, but all the directories out there that would list your business information, Yelp, Foursquare, Thumbtack, Angie, TripAdvisor, um, you know, getting those listings um, up to date. Most of them are, um, you know, free to do. Some of them do have an upgrade, upgraded paid version. Um, but a lot of them you can get for free. You just claim similar to Google where you claim your listing and update the information. So, you know, we've looked at a lot of different options, kind of sailed through a lot of different possibilities. Um, and so, you know, the next step really is to be thinking about, you know, what tools am I going to use and, and what's the plan going forward? How am I going to start, you know, kind of either creating a, a digital marketing strategy if you don't have one already, or maybe honing it to, to make it a little more effective. Again, you know, that target market is gonna be very important in making this decision. So, you know, match the tools that you use to the target you're trying to reach. Um, you know, which of these options is most likely to reach the customer persona that we talked about, or those customer groups that we talked about. Um, based on the age range and, and the type of content that you have, what are they interested in seeing and where can you have that so that they see it? Um, thinking about what types of digital strategies are gonna capture their attention. Is this a group of people who like to get emails or is that going to annoy them? Would they rather see um, a Facebook Live or a video um, on your Facebook page or would they rather look at YouTube? So kind of knowing you know, a little bit about those customers and their psychology, um, and, and where you're gonna best be able to find them. And then lastly, thinking about what their wants and needs are. How can you meet those? So if your customer base are people who wanna gather information before they make a decision about buying, probably a website and maybe some YouTube videos would be really helpful. If you have customers who make impulse buys, um, you know, maybe a social media um, option is gonna be good um, so that they can make a purchase through social media. Um, it just depends on who those customers are and what they're looking for. So you really have to know that before you can kind of make these decisions. And then the other thing I think is important is to set goals, thinking about what is it that you want to accomplish with your digital marketing. And it could be any number of these and it could be something else. Um, so it's, you know, kind of a progression or a combination of what you're trying to achieve. Um, you know, your goal could be awareness. Maybe you just want more people aware of your brand. Um, perhaps it's engagement where you want people to actually be seeking you out. They, they know that they want, you know, XYZ product from your company and they're going to, you know, find you somewhere online. Um, maybe it's conversion. Maybe you want people who are following you on social media to go to your website and make a purchase. You want to make them from just a, uh, you know, a, a person who's connected to you to someone who's a customer and making a purchase. Um, you know, maybe you want them to share their experience and provide a review. Maybe your goal would be to grow your existing customer base. If you've already got a base of business, maybe you're just looking for more and you want to, you know, either get the customers that you already have to make bigger purchase or additional purchases um, or bigger purchases, or maybe you're looking for, you know, new customers altogether. Um, and so, you know, depending on what your goals are will help you to drive the decision of which social media to use and how you're going to use it or which, you know, type of website you're going to have and how you're going to use that. Um, so those are all the things that kind of go into making the decisions um, that will help you ultimately develop a plan. And so obviously, you know, your local SBDC can be a resource for that. We can sit down with you and help you kind of walk through all of the options and examine your target market and decide how those things line up with what types of digital marketing. Um, but I also included here some links to um, some guides for marketing plans, digital marketing plans specifically. Um, and so, you know, these are all things that I think, you know, you could, you know, delve into and get a little bit of an idea. Um, but like I said, you know, certainly know that we're available for individualized help with this that so we can sit and walk you through it. Um, so even if you review some of these and you're like, gee, I'm still lost or I just need to tweak a few things, we're here for, for all of that. So do we have any questions at this point?
We'll also go ahead and give everyone the option to unmute. So feel free to speak up if you have a question or put it in the chat. We'll just take a couple of minutes for that. Um, and of course, we'll share all of the slides and Michelle's contact info, and you can always reach out to us directly as well um, if you have questions. I think, uh, Michelle, unless you have anything else to add, we'll go ahead and, and wrap it up for today. Okay, that's great. Okay, um, so thank you everyone for joining us today. And thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing all of your expertise. Um, this is a lot of great information and I know I learned a lot of new things as well. Um, so this does conclude our Marketing Tools for Small Business series. And in the coming days, we'll share the recording of today's session, um, these slides, and we'll also share a link to watch the full marketing series on YouTube. Uh, so stay tuned for details about upcoming programs this spring and summer as well. Um, we'll have news coming out for programs on welcoming and belonging, uh, bookkeeping and grant writing. And as always, feel free to reach out with any questions. Okay. Thank you everyone Thanks. and have a good day. Bye.